Hey guys, um, this this video is going to be about the almighty dollar, but it's really about all the idols that have destroyed us as a nation, even as a world. But a, a while back, maybe even a year ago, it's a long time ago, the Lord, the Lord eight months ago probably, <clears throat> I was in prayer and the Lord said that there's America has more idols than India. Like, man, that, ouch, to say the least. But this is all tied together to all this coronavirus garbage and to the video that I have out about a storm coming to America. 8-11 to 9-11, 2020. Had that dream a year ago, guys. I've had additional dreams to it keeping coming so these are these videos are about to come out like a flood because there's way too many idols the almighty dollar has become an idol cash is not king jesus is i've got scriptures to back it up guys okay isaiah 9 and 6 for unto us a child is born unto us is a son is given and the government shall rest upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace look around what do you hear masks the mark of the beast um coronavirus garbage everywhere you look just sheer i'm not knocking and saying that it's not real and that it hasn't killed people and it's not serious and that we shouldn't take precautions and all that. But you all know, man, it's time to separate the reality from the non-reality lies from fiction. But everybody's focused on Donald Trump. He's going to save the day. Government's going to save the day. Congress is going to save the day. This stimulus package, these bailouts. Who locked us up, guys? The government. Now they want to hand us a little bit of money. A pittance even. It's fake money, guys. It's a trap. The government, I'm not saying, before y'all jump on the boat and say I'm a Trump hater, I'm not. Voted for the guy. Probably going to vote for him again, honestly. I'm not saying don't vote. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, there's a storm coming right now, so that's why it got a little darker. But what I'm saying is, <clears throat> trust in the Lord with all your heart. I mean, not in your own understanding. But trust isn't in man and the laws that they make. He's being duped, guys, honestly, by a bunch of hogwash, too. Some of it is him. Okay, put the shoe on the other foot. If you were running for, if you were running for re-election, you know, he's kind of in a trap himself. Can't go too far one way, can't go too far the other way. Because <clears throat> he wants to get reelected. So, but our focus is the economy, the economy, the economy. You know what, guys? I am very sorry to tell you, but the economy's not coming back. For the world. But it is for God's people. And this is the argument a lot of people have. I'm going to get to the, this money piece too in a second, even deeper. But I hear this argument all the time. Oh, don't say anything if it's not good. Oh, don't say anything if it's not great news. Oh, God's good all the time. Uh, uh, absolutely. When we, when we seek him, when we're in following his will, when we're in his direction, when we're his children, when we let him in, when he takes over, when we take over and the flesh takes over and we do whatever the heck we want, you think God's, I mean, put the shoe on the other foot, guys, if you're God, what would you say about most of this mess? Seriously. So, that's a lame argument. And I'll tell you why. Five foolish and five wise virgins. What happened to the five that didn't get the oil? 
didn't know God, didn't have a relationship with him, didn't even know him, but yet they did his works. They got to the door and let us in, we cast out devils in your name, we healed the sick, we raised the dead, we did all these wonderful, great things. What did he tell them? Apart from me, your work was of iniquity, I never knew you. The marriage supper of the Lamb, read it, Matthew 22. What happened to the people that didn't listen, that took it lightly? That's one of my messages. Read it, guys. You don't like those pages? Rip them out. Tear them out of the Bible. Everybody wants to hear, oh, blessed, 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 blessed. You're going to get a new car, a new house. Man, that's, that's, a, that's a lame message, guys. That's how what got us into this, this trouble to begin with. People treat God like an ATM. Think you give them $100, you get 1000 back. Give them 1000 you're going to get 100000 or whatever, you know? It doesn't work like that, guys. The whole tithe message. It said that there might be food in my house. The money's not in there, guys. I'm not saying don't give. I, I, we, I, I'm just going to throw this out there. We probably get 25% or more of our income, honestly. Maybe more, sometimes even way more. And God just pours it back. None of you guys have given me an offering or my skin of the game. Very little. I don't need it. I'll use all of it, though. I'll use whatever God gives me. If you so got a checkbook, write it out. I'll take the million dollars. But it's not my point. My point is he's taking care of it. And I got a hundred plus testimonies so just since just just since December that can prove it. <clears throat> I can prove what I'm saying. And I will. I'll get to that eventually. Right now, no. Because I want to stay on this subject. So we've got all this focus on the economy, the money, things coming back. It is for God's people. He gave me a helps ministry my wife and I started told me to give away 90% and keep 10%. And God, I kind of need a paycheck, you know, like everybody else. But okay, God. And the funds that he gave me, it just, it, this isn't not enough message. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, it was like, where do I move what we have? On the lot. We're not destitute. But it just, you know, the things he was showing me, it was like, Gonna have to be you, God. And then he gave me a really, really low budget. If you knew the budget that he gave me to start this, it would be like, man, most people would laugh. It was complete, and it came completely. I didn't have it. I had didn't didn't want to take the money out of what we had because we needed it to, to live, to pay our bills, gotta eat. Me and my wife and my little dog, I like to eat. And I like to have power on and I like to be able to have air conditioning and I got to have gas in my car, you know what I mean? <clears throat> not naive. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying, not be naive. We all need the money. But it's the trust issue. So, I was like, I'm not going to take it out of the bank. We had some, but not, you know, it wasn't a lot. Now it is, it's more than sufficient, honestly. Way more than sufficient. And none of you guys gave me any money. <clears throat> I didn't take up a, I didn't have nothing, fun drive or nothing. But God, and he took care of it, he took care of it well. So that's my point where I'm going to get to eventually with the, some of the testimonies, but right now, no. But this one, we had X amount of dollars in the bank, and it was, you know, well, I guess we're not destitute, but it was getting kind of thin. And the Lord laid on my heart to do something more than once. A couple times he told me to give away more than he gave me the budget to start this helps ministry. It's like, man, God, I could really use that, but okay. Very next day, I got it back, and then so not even planned. But 
he told me to give some away, and I was like, okay, God, but kind of need it, but apparently not. I'm just going to do the obedience thing, not even question it. Not blind stupidity, ultimate trust and obedience. Okay, God, it's you anyhow. I'm your vessel. You're molding me and shaping me. Yes, God. And I did. Purpose to my heart. That very same morning, I get a phone call. Check. Somebody wanted to give me a check. Very large check. Way, way more than what I was about to give away. Paled in comparison, honestly. And then, within days of that, somebody else gave me almost as much in another form and fashion. And he told me that a while back when I started that, he said, people were gonna just give us stuff. And it's like, okay, well, they did. Started out small, I will tell this one testimony because this is real small, very, very small, guys. But what he just did was very, very big, two times. But he told me, he said, people are gonna start giving us stuff. I'm like, okay, so I'm doing my work and working in a, uh, in a store and doing some stuff in the storage and kind of cleaning it out, part of the ministry and then to give away stuff. He told me to give away 90%, which I've been doing and keeping 10. And he said his eyes were gonna be upon it and bless it and they have been, and then some. <laughs> and I'm working and some guy next to me is doing his stuff too. And he says, hey, a couple toolboxes. I'm like, sure, you know, I'm just something else I can give away or sell or whatever, or just, you know, do something with. To bless somebody, probably just give it away, honestly. I just figured they'd be all, you know, as a construction guy, I figured they'd be all ready toolboxes with, you know, rusty tools and some paint on them or something. Brand new toolboxes. Two of them. One was a DeWalt and one was a Craftsman. They were like 80 bucks a piece, brand new. They still look brand new. You could have put a tag on them and sold them. And all, one of the big box stores, they're brand new. You know, yeah, that's minor, that's small. That's how it kind of started. Now it's like exploded. Trust me, it's exploded. Way, way, way more. That's like just a drop in the bucket to, compared to what he's just done two times, three times. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not even trying to count. It's been faithful, guys. And this is where I'm getting to with this, about this storm that's coming to America. He told me it's gonna be not gonna destroy the country, but it's gonna bring us to our knees. All the idols are going away, guys. You can't hang on to anything. None of them. Because it's separating us from his love. His goodness, his grace, and his mercy is there. One of the messages I got out from two years ago is about the economic collapse of the USA. Guys, we were a broke country back then, and now all I want to do is borrow more money and print more money and three billion, two, tri two billion, trillion. I don't even know what a trillion is. Honestly, my second grade math doesn't count that high. I'm not an economist, but my common sense and the Holy Ghost and the spirit of discernment, it's fake, false, and a trap to control us and to usher in the mark of the beast. <clears throat> but this storm coming is to clear a path, guys. Man, it's going to rain down from heaven. And it may not be the 15 flavors that you like and, and the salt to go with it. and every, You know, it may just be plain Jane. I don't know. But it's going to be sustenance. It may be great. It may be small. It's going to be what it needs to be. <clears throat> You're not going to have to stack it up. You're not going to have to gather it up. Others may, that may be the vessel you are, but this is what I'm saying, guys. 
okay, been all blasted all over the news. A bunch of the rich people made three bill, three hundred billion dollars. They doubled, doubled their net worth. They're <laughs> worth a lot of money, guys, and they didn't give any of it away. Just kept stacking it up. Took advantage of the situation. This is an old lame excuse. Oh, they're pumping money into the economy. All these big, big billionaires and their their businesses and stuff. No, they pay two people ten bucks an hour, hoping to make twenty to fifty or hundred dollars an hour off of them. Make make money off the sweat. Off the, it, that's a lame argument, guys. Let's get real. They're not doing it to put the account people back to work. They're doing it to make money. Bottom line. And then talk out one side of their mouth and something else comes out the other. <laughs> here's, here's the proof in the Bible. James 5. Behold the wages of the labor who moweth your fields, which you have kept back by fraud, are, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Leviticus, You shall not oppose your neighbors or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. Jeremiah 22, 13, Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his upper rooms by injustice, who make his neighbor serve him for nothing and does not give him wages. A lot of these big companies, guys, are paying men on wage or crap. One of them was in the news, one of the biggest retailers in the world. You can read between the lines, guys. I'm not naming names, maybe because of the lawsuits and all that other garbage. on the news for telling people how to get government subsidies and welfare and different things because they're paying them crappy wages, garbage wages. The lower end people, like they can't even live without having a house full of people working. Government barely pays them a minute, anything in disability or social security or whatever. Some of them can't work because they don't make much more than that. It doesn't make economically it doesn't make much sense. Timothy, for the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. The labor deserves his wages. Deuteronomy 24, 14, and 15. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of the sojourners who are in your land with your towns. You shall give him the wages on the same day before the sun sets for the poor and the for the poor and counts on it. For he is poor and counts on it, lest he cry against you to the Lord, and he be guilty of sin. Pretty blatant, guys. Then I will draw you near to you for judgment. I will, Malachi 3, 5, I will be swift against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the workers in his wages, and the widows and the fatherless, against those who trust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Plenty more. Guys, our wages are being oppressed. What if they do lock us down and... Call, call people non-essential. That ain't even in the Bible, guys. Read Matthew 20. The laborers, Jesus needed laborers. He called everybody, paid them all the same. He considers us all the sons and daughters of his. If we put it, let him be in us, our, our heart, let the Holy Ghost rule and reign us, accept him as our, our savior, the blood of the lamb, saved and set free. It's got a stipulation on it because they want something out of it. They want power, control, money, status. It's an idol, guys, and just one of them that's coming apart. No, the economy's not coming back. You can take that to the bank. Seriously. But for his children his sons and daughters, 
it's going to explode. And the world's going to look at us and say, what do you got that I don't? People are going to just give us things, guys. Some people out of a pure heart, some are going to give us and try to buy their way out of their misery and trouble and their, and their torment. And some are going to try to spite out our liberty. Because the enemy, because the Bible says that, that some vessels are created for honor and some for dishonor. There's weeds and tears, guys. Not everybody's going to get it. I'm sorry, it's sad. I don't wish ill upon anybody. I'm not the doom and gloom guy. I'm the watchman warning, telling you it's not coming back. I don't care who gets in presidency and who doesn't. And I'm not saying don't vote and it doesn't count and don't be, don't, you need to vote for school boards, city councils, mayors. Look at all the people, Chicago, People that don't even hardly have a title been a blasting on the news. If you don't stay home, we're going to arrest you and fine you thousands of dollars. Scaring you. And they're not even the president. They're not even the mayor. They're not even, they were some, you know, glorified clerk. it's an idol guys one of many I love it entertainment money self the biggest one look at all how rude people are nowadays I mean I don't remember and I doesn't seem like they were that rude when I was a kid honestly when I was younger now it's like everybody's got a cell phone up their butt computer tablet honk at you impatient my wife got yelled at the other day at the store by some lady because the lady kept getting out of line and filling up her cart and just kept going back and forth and back and forth while she was waiting in line and just piling and piling and piling stuff well and then my wife said something to her she said ma'am you know there's other people in line and my wife is a sweet person the lady went ballistic they had to get run out of the store the manager had to run out of the store Self, selfies, American Idol, a big show, entertainment, people just blast in your face about how proud they are about abortions and why they do it and how God, God says it's okay and everything else. Man, I wonder if we all act stressed out. We're stretched pretty thin. The truth is coming out, though, guys. All these idols are coming down. That's what this storm is. I'm not making this up. I'm going to end with this. The captain of the Titanic was warned hours before. You're heading into an iceberg field. What did he do? Pride. It's my maiden voyage. This ship is unsinkable. They told me that, that you know, because of all the compartment, you know, the science of it. Compartments, you know, watertight, whatever. Unsinkable, unthinkable. Greatest ship on earth. Maiden voyage, my last voyage. It was going to be, I think it was supposed to be his last voyage. He was going to go with a bang, be this big history captain or whatever. What did he tell him? Full steam ahead. That's what we're doing right now. We'll steam ahead. Guys, I didn't shut all the churches down for a season. God did. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't be a good God, blah, 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 da, da, da. No, he did it because it was built upon sand. And his, it is good. His grace and mercy is, wait a minute, guys. I want to rebuild my people. Upon the rock of true salvation because your soul's worth eternity to him and not just a relationship be within the rest of eternity and that's how valuable you are the enemy's got you thinking something else you put your value in a building 
a ministry, a minister. They all call themselves prophets and apostles and popes. And that's just so that they don't have to listen to anybody, including God. If you read the job description for most of those, you wouldn't want the job. Take up your cross and follow me. Most of it's not pleasant. Why would you want to be a pastor? The, the workload is intense. That's why we need to pray for them. But all this glory power trip stuff is going away. It's fake idols, phony. God just playing field. I'm going to end with this 5 a.m. prayer. Get up, guys. Start the day. Nothing's going on. You don't have to turn on anything but your coffee pot. You might not drink coffee, but I do, so that's going on first. But after that, I'm sitting down and going to start praying while my coffee's cooking and get my first cup. I just, I just like coffee. Okay, maybe that's an idol. Maybe I need to get rid of it. I don't know. Hopefully and prayfully not, but, you know, we'll see. But everything else, your phone, your computer, your iPad, the news, you can wait. I don't get up every day at 5. I'd like to, but I don't. There's day, I mean, because of what he's having me do. And all this lockdown stuff, you know what, guys? It happened right when the Lord had had me doing these things. I was out six days a week, seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Out. About my father's business. And there's others that are doing it, too. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only guy on the block doing this. Plenty of others. Not enough, it seems like, but plenty of others. For the Lord to do what he's trying to do. So we got to get rid of these idols, guys. And the biggest one is self. And the probably second biggest one is the money, the trust in the money. We lied to God, hoodwinked him, and God we trust. We don't trust in God. Say we do. Do we really? That's why I said it's time to repent. Weep between the porch and the altar. At 5 a.m., get your butt up with me. And if you can't, great. If it's 1 o'clock, people need to pray at 1 in the morning all night long. We need to have 24-hour prayer. That's what should have happened, guys. Instead of the church is closing, is we should have had 24-7 prayer. Getting hold to God. Because if we had that much power, why couldn't they just... Flip the switch and not only lock up the people, but focus in on the church. Now, they're, you know, you hear about it all the time, and I don't, you know, I'm trying not to totally believe the internet either. I'm trying not to believe all the news, and I'm not trying to not believe it. I'm just like, man, I don't know. But even if a tenth of it is true or parts of it are true, I'm trying to decipher it as best I can do, like you guys do and make an informed decision. But it seems like they're on the church's butt. Kansas City, you know, you gotta have lists. Uh, you get fined, you get, you know, cars towed. Uh, no more gatherings till we say so, till you get a vaccine. <sighs> Enough. The idols, guys. The, the economy's not coming back because it rests upon his shoulders. The government rests upon his shoulders, not upon who we vote into political office. The, the politics has become an idol too, guys. The weather has become an idol. Congress has become an idol. Judges have become idols. All the stuff that's we put before God. The Supreme Court lets us be a nation that murders our unborn. And we all, oh, it's okay. We bark about it and kind of do nothing about it, honestly. Me too. That's why it's time to weep between the porch and the altar. No more games, guys. This is the real deal. Love you. Let's get rid of these idols, whatever they might be. Love you.